Yo, what's good with y'all? In today's video, I got the how to make a basic skill. This video in the, I guess, how to make a basic skill series is, uh, what is it again? Oh, yes, just Black Flash from Jujutsu Kaisen. I'm pretty sure you guys have seen the ability used. It's been used by different characters, Nanami, Yuji, uh, I think Toji, but yeah, it's been, I mean, not Toji, uh, Toto, yeah, yeah. But anyway, um, not gonna lie, not gonna lie, it's kind of off topic, but the episode, if any of y'all watched the new Jujutsu Kaisen episode yesterday, not gonna lie, that shit was fine, that, that, that episode was fine, but anyway, moving on, thank you guys for all the love and support you've been showing, I really do appreciate it, and stuff, and y'all already know, it's the start of November, I got a whole bunch of content for y'all, it's actually my birthday month, so best believe, I got y'all with a lot of great content, but anyway, let's go ahead and get straight into the video. Okay, so first things first, you guys already know, we're gonna need a remote event. I said on order to replicate a storage, insert a remote event by clicking the plus icon, type remote event if you don't see it, insert it, and name it combat event. Let me just double check. Okay, I'm good. So yes, name it combat event, leave that inside of replicated storage. Then inside of server storage, we're going to have a black flash effect. You can find this effect. Oh, what? I mean, you can't see it. Let me put it in spawn location. Okay, so to pretty much explain this, right, I'll have a link to this effect in the description. So you can download it, and then you can get the effect from the sword. All you need is the particle emitter. And stuff and then i renamed it to black flash all you need is the, the lightning effect right so i did change some of the properties i'll show you guys the properties real quick i did change some of the properties i made the z offset four i think i only changed yeah i changed two things i believe just made i just changed the z offset in the li in the lifetime the rate i changed the rate to 300 but here's a here's a look at all the properties so you guys can see how to make it just like i did so yeah and then name it black flash and once you do leave it inside of server storage once again you can find this in the description i have a link to it in the description i did not make this but do it. <laughs> and then yeah so this is the black flash effect leave that inside of server storage then inside of sound service i have two sounds you guys have definitely oh well i don't need this wait actually no i do i do need that actually yeah no no, no sorry never mind so yeah, yeah i have two sound effects um we have the punch sound and then we have the kick sound and then we have the kick sound right so pretty much uh open up the toolbox go to audio type punch kick whatever and then you guys will find your own audios get them drop them set a sound service and boom you're good to go now we can go ahead and get into the scripting or actually let, let me go ahead and get a rig let's go ahead and make a rig so we can test this okay so let's click avatar and then um uh, where is it rig builder then i'm gonna do r6 because my animations are r6 so yeah my animations are r6 so i'm going to use an r6 rig so i'm going to insert a local script let's head on over to starter player then starter player script insert a local script we can go ahead and name the script combat script and in parentheses put uh sorry not server local then we're going to delete print hello world we're going to first get the user input service variable. So local UIS is equal to game, get service, user input service. And then we're going to get the combat remote event. So local combat event is equal to game, that replicated storage, wait for child, combat event. Then I'm going to set up the user input service function. So user input service dot input began, sorry, connect function in parentheses put input comma processed enter. Then we'll say if input that user input type is equal to enum that user input type that keyboard and processed is equal to false enter then if input that key code is equal to enum that key code that e enter combat event fire server then in quotation marks i'm going to put combo simply just because that's the or actually no no, no it's called black flash sorry i actually forgot to change the name because i usually like i type thing i just give things a general name and then i usually go back and in the change things to match like the specific video but anyway so um as always you guys can change this to whatever keybind you want um processed equals false just to make sure the player is not typing in chat and yeah moving on we can move on to the server script head on over to server script service insert a server script you're gonna need two animations if you want to have well well i mean i guess if you're doing it the way i i'm doing it oh by the way you guys probably want these animations yeah, you guys definitely want these animations. Um, okay. I will also leave a link to that in the description. I, I'll just have to go find that. Yeah, you know, I'll just have to go find that. But yeah, I will leave a link to where I got both these animations from. As well as, um, well, the knockback animation is a regular knockback animation. So you guys could just search up knockback. But I'll search, but you guys need this specific combo animation. So I will leave that leave link to that in the description. So put both of the animations out of the script. If you don't know how to create animations, like the thing, just the plus icon type animation boom make sure you name it combo animation or we could say you can name it black flash we could say black flash animation right 
And then of course you have a knockback animation, throw your animation ID inside, it autofill it, then set your name and boom, you're good to go. Now let's go ahead and name the script combat script and in parentheses put server. Then we're going to delete print hello world. First things first, we're going to get a couple variables, honestly, but getting quite a few, not going to lie. First things first, we're going to get the debris service, so local ds due to game, get service, debris, then let's get the sound service, local ss, you get to game, get service, sound service, then I'm going to get the remote event, so local combat event is equal to game, the replicated storage, wait for child, combat event. <clears throat> then I'm going to create a table so that we know which players can attack. So local can attack is equal to special brackets. This is how we create a table. Then I'm put a space in between. I'm going to set up the function. I'm going to say combat event and on server event connect function. In parentheses, put PLR, which is short for the player. Then event type. Enter, create a variable for the player's character. So we're going to say local character is equal to player dot character. Then I'm going to say if event type is equal to black flash enter then i'm gonna insert the player's name into the table so that we know they can attack table.insert can't attack and then the player's name then i'm going to use a for loop this will pretty much um the way the attack works is that if a player is within a certain radius it'll do the attack and pretty much the radius i'm going with is five i think yeah, yeah five so if the player is with at least within five studs of the player then they'll be able to attack and like just to put this in perspective you have to be like right in the player's face to, for this attack to work but you guys can change the radius to whatever you want so i'm going to say for i comma v in pairs workspace get children enter it's going to be a long if statement so get ready first if v find first child humanoid making sure it's either an NPC or a player and in parentheses do character dot humanoid root part dot position minus you can really copy and paste this to save some time so control c control v change this to v so v to human root part dot position go on the outside and do dot magnitude is less than or equal to five again you guys can change the range to whatever you want and v dot name is nil equal to player dot name making sure the player isn't attacking themselves and then la one last and we need to make sure the player's name is within the table sorry not within inside the table so and table dot find can attack can attack player dot name making sure the name is inside the table and then boom we're done with the if statement Moving on, once we've confirmed all this information, we can then begin the attack. So we're gonna remove the name from the table since you know they should only be able to use this attack once per you know once per time that like they press the E key. So then I'm gonna say table dot remove can attack comma table dot find can attack player dot name. Boom. Their name has been removed from the table. Then let's set up. We're gonna create a variable for the enemy character. So local enemy character. This is for better organization. So equals v. Then I'm gonna set up the animation track for the attacking players so at short for animation track is equal to character make sure you're using the right character because pay attention if it's the character or the enemy character so just make sure you're watching for that the character dot sorry not humanoid root part character dot humanoid load animation and uh, you want to do script regular brackets quotation marks and then this is the black flash animation and then of course i am going to place that animation so at play right then i'm going to clone the, the black flash lightning effect instead of server storage twice so i'm going to say local black flash clone is equal to gain the server storage dot black flash clone and remember this is black flash clone one so you could just copy and paste this control c control v and then of course rename this simply just a two and then you're going to want to parent them to the player's hands so since this is R6, we're gonna go with uh, we're just gonna do right hand, I mean right arm, left arm. So black flash clone one parent is equal to character dot oh sorry, special bracket, I mean regular brackets. I forgot this is R6. So since we're using R6, if you're using R15, then you just do uh character dot uh I don't know, left upper arm and stuff, right? But yeah, so regular brackets quotation sorry, quotation marks, and then left arm. Then the same thing, but except uh, the second one, character, regular brackets, quotation marks, now for right arm, right? We've parented the effects. Now we can start, we can really start the attack, I guess you could say. So I'm going to say ss.dbz, or wait, wait, why isn't that working? 
I'm so confused. Wait, the sound service. Oh, I must not have called. Oh, I didn't even realize. My fault, guys. I did not even realize. So make sure you spell this right. Sound service. Okay, there you go. So yeah. So SS, DVD, punch sound, play. Then I've synced this up. If you're using different sound effects, you may have to mess with the wait time so that it syncs correctly. But yeah, so for me, I play the sound. I play the sound. And then I, um, I'm going to play the knockback animation every time. So control C, because, you know, for each punch, we need to do knockback for the players. I mean, for the character that's being attacked. So AT2, AT2, second animation track, and then changes to anim enemy character and changes to knockback. They're not actually getting knocked back. We're just playing a knockback animation because the knockback animation also applies for, you know, if you're just getting punched. And then we're going to say task.wait 0.3 seconds. Then we're literally just going to repeat this entire process until we get to five. So control C, control V, control V, and control V. I think we got to do it. Wait, what is it? Three, four, five. Yeah, okay, that should be good. Okay, so we do got to change some things. So first things first, change this to three three simply just for better organization uh the wait time for the second one is 0 0.5 seconds instead and this is the fourth animation track and then the wait time for this is still 0 0.3 seconds and then we have the fifth and final knockback which is i believe the kick yeah i, I believe it should be the kick so we're gonna play we're gonna play this animation so instead of uh this we're playing the kick sound and the reason for that is because um uh, what's it called well, that's because the last thing is a, is a kick, so yeah. And then, um, after that, oh, we don't need a wait after that. Because we're going to play the kick sound and then the uh, knockback animation, and then boom. So after that, we're then going to actually set up the knockback like effect and then destroy the effects and everything when we're all done. So I'm going to say local attach. I always spell this wrong. Attachment is equal, is equal to instance.new. Attachment parented to the enemy character's humanoid root part. Then let's create a linear velocity. So linear velocity is equal to instance.new linear velocity. Then we're going to parent this to the attachment. Then we're going to set some properties. So linear velocity dot max force is equal to five nines, one, two, three, four, five. Right. Then I'm going to set the vector velocity. So vector velocity is equal to parentheses then uh, let's actually save ourselves some time let's go back up here copy and paste this so just control c then control v change the v to enemy character even though we're referencing the same thing just generally for better organization and then the great news is we can literally just leave this as the, as is change the outside or not change the outside but just put that unit on the outside then do times factor three dot new zero comma zero and here's the knockback effect so negative 40. so if you want them to fly back further change the number if you want them to, to not fly back as far change the number whatever you know whatever your preference is and then i'm going to um what's it called i'm going to set the at the attachment so linear velocity dot attachment zero is of course equal to the attachment we just created now for the ragdoll i'm going to say enemy character dot humanoid root part dot anchor just in case is equal to false and then in character dot humanoid root part dot c frame is times equal c frame dot angles math dot rad for radians 180 comma zero comma zero then we're going to use the debris service so ds add atom we're literally just destroying a whole bunch of things so we're going to destroy the attachment after 0.1 second then we're going to also destroy the black flash clones but the, the difference is this is after 0 0.6 seconds so that we can actually see the, the actual effects because you know we wouldn't want it to disappear as quickly as it appeared and then it's like you didn't even get a chance to really see the effects then we're going to go on the outside so skip two ends and then you're going to say task that there's oh i forgot a comma and then we're going to say um let's see what i did and then we're going to say task that wait um i went with test that wait five seconds i believe that should be good um Pretty much the whole point is you want this to, you want this, like what's going to proceed to happen at like when the attack is finished, pretty much it's just double checking to make sure that the players, that the player already attacks somebody. Cause look, when we trigger the attack into the player's name into the table, right? But then again, if you're not within range, you didn't actually attack anybody. You simply just, you simply just, um, what's it called? You simply just try to use the attack.
but your name is inside the table so we need to double check to make sure the player's name is not inside the table so we're going to say if table dot find can attack player then i'm going to do that player dot what is going on player dot name enter then table dot removed can attack comma table dot find can attack comma player dot name right and boom it is that simple uh, so if it's removing the player's name from the well, I mean, actually, no, no, the way you think about that honestly wouldn't really matter. Yeah, that wouldn't really matter because the attack would. Oh yeah, actually, that doesn't really matter. But anyway, yeah. So we can go ahead and test this. Um, like I said, as always, you guys want access to any of my scripts and models. You guys can become either a channel member or a Discord subscriber. Links to both of those options can be found in the description. Thank you guys for all my channel members and Discord subscribers. Greatly appreciate it. And my subscribers, of course, just have to give them a special shout out. But anyway, so as you can see, if I press the E key, nothing is happening because I'm not close enough, even if I'm this close. But if I'm like right in the player's face, boom, 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 and boom. Right now, like now, timing wise, you may have to mess around with the timing if it's like not properly in sync. It felt a little off. Let me see. Boom, boom. Okay, yeah. I mean, it feels a little off, but kind of works. But anyway, just mess around with the um this wait time and stuff. If if, uh, if the animations are delayed too fast, same with the sound effects. Just literally, all you guys gotta do change these. That's really all you gotta do. But yeah. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, definitely leave a like and subscribe. Thank you guys for three thousand two hundred subscribers. Greatly appreciated. Let's go for four thousand by the, by like mid December. So yeah, like before Christmas type thing. And yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. And yeah, see you guys in the next video.